Okay, so when we have the quotient of powers property, um, what we want to do is we want to take these um, values and we want to expand them out. So um, that just kind of helps us see where the rule comes from. So remember, um, I don't want you, I mean, I want you to remember the rule, but I want you to know why the rule exists, right? So um, we're going to take this and this is 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. And 7 to the third is 7 times 7 times 7. Right? So um, what you can see here is that these are going to cancel out and you're left with 7 squared. Okay. Now, what happens if, let's say a different example, let's say 8 to the second over 8 to the sixth power. So we have fewer on top, right? Well, right, what you're gonna do is you're going to take the top, and this is eight times eight, we're gonna expand it out, eight to the sixth. And you can see that these cancel out, and what you're left with is four eights here. So, but what you have to remember is, really, this is always times one. So you don't want to forget about this like one that is like sitting there even though you can't see it. So what you're going to end up with is one over one, two, three, four, eight to the fourth power. And so what you're doing with these exponents is you're subtracting them. And if you guys watched the Ed puzzle yesterday, then you would have kind of understood or you would have seen that they explain this just a little bit like kind of with a little bit differently um, so that um, you know the understanding that right if you had seven to the fifth and seven to the third right this is in the denominator so it's the same it's equivalent to seven to the negative third so we could have changed this to seven to the fifth times seven to the negative three. And so now that we're multiplying, we can just add those. So five, right, five positives plus three negatives. So these cancel, see this is why we can't cancel out and you're left with two, so seven squared. It's the same answer. Um, if we look at the second example, Eight squared over eight to the sixth. Again, this is in the denominator. So we can say that this is the same as eight to the negative six if it's not in the denominator. You know, it has to come out of the denominator. You can't just put a negative six when it's down there, right? So then this we could rewrite as eight to the second times eight to the negative six. Right? And so if you have two positives and six negatives, you're going to see that some of the positives and negatives cancel out, and you're left with four negatives. So eight to the negative four, right? which is the same as one over eight to the fourth. So understanding how those negative exponents can show that we're showing division, right? Knowing that if it is division, we can change it to a negative exponent if that makes us feel more comfortable. It's a different way of solving that problem.